Hey everyone, I'm Adam Kelly. This is the final entry in the Team Button Collaborative ML Agents Devlog series. If you've been following along, you'll have seen the challenge before. Uh, this is sort of the spruced up, pretty looking version, final version of things all working together. So I'm excited to show you that. We're also gonna talk about the new Immersive Limit Community Forum, which I've been excited about launching for a long time, and we're finally gonna do it now. So stay tuned for that. And uh, right now we're gonna show a little preview of what the project looks like. So let's talk about this project. This is a much prettier version of what it used to look like. Basically, not much has changed here. In this scene, you'll see that there's still a button and a door and a button and a target area that the characters need to get to. So the challenge, as you probably already know, but I'm gonna repeat it anyway, is one of the agents needs to stand on this button which this button is supposed to sort of be like where the the camera is pointing for the doors to automatically open. So I'm, I could have just made it more visual, but I thought that this was fine. Uh, then the other agent needs to go through the doors and then this button needs to be pressed so the other agent can come through and then they both need to get to the back of the parking lot together. So that's the challenge. And you can see that I've made it look a lot more interesting uh, than it used to. I had some fun modeling this, and I admit that I probably took a little more time modeling it than I sh maybe should have, but I like to have fun with this stuff sometimes. So uh, if I let it play, let me actually just, I mean, you've already seen this in the preview video, but I'm just gonna let it play uh, so we can talk about it and turn off training mode so that they always spawn at the back of the store. So yeah, the only thing that's really different now uh, in terms of you know how the environment is laid out is there's double doors now instead of just a single door. And uh, the parking lot is a little bit deeper. They have to get all the way to the end and uh, it looks different. Let me just describe briefly how this actually works. It's using a ray perception sensor, which is built into the ML agents package. And so each agent has sort of its own LIDAR that can detect uh, basically all the different things that it's going to run into. So it can see the other agent, it can see anything tagged as wall, which I have basically everything in the environment is considered a wall to it because it's just in the way. And then it can also see door. It can't see buttons or the final target area. Those are just fixed in space now. They used to move back and forth, but for now they just move or they just stay in place. So it's it's not like a, a new target they have to find. They're given their relative position in this whole space and also their relative ro rotation. And then also they're told whether each button is pressed. So they're able to coordinate and decide if I'm standing on a button that, or I'm if I'm in a certain position and the button is pressed, then they're able to associate rewards with that behavior. Now for rewards, those are pretty straightforward. Basically, they get rewarded a little bit each step that they're on this side of the of the wall outside the door. They get rewarded for standing on a button, either of these buttons, but they only get rewarded if their friend is not outside of the store. So if their friend is still inside the store and they're on a button, they get the reward, but if they're both out in the parking lot, then no reward for them. And then finally, they get a big reward at the end for both exiting the parking lot. I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. Yeah, the the pairs look kind of dumb when they're walking around, but uh, I probably could have trained them to the point where they were a little bit smarter than they are. But it's also pretty comical to me to watch them just struggle and work through this. 
Uh, one thing I mentioned in the last video is I thought maybe there was something to do with the... Uh, there was basically an observation I was giving these agents was an agent ID. Uh, I Basically, each agent is either agent zero or agent one, and I wasn't sure if that was doing much to help them learn. And I did some tests, and I'll say they're inconclusive. I did have a successful run without the agent ID, but the majority of the ones I tried did not work. Uh, but then they seem to train more consistently if they have an agent ID. So that makes me think that maybe it is helping, uh, but that it's not necessarily required to work. So I'm not sure. Um, more to come on that. One thing that is interesting that I'll mention is that Unity recently did a blog post on their uh, Unity blog, and they mention in here what they're going to work on for 2021, and they say cooperative multi-agent behavior. Well, that sounds a lot like what I've been trying to do here. Enable easier and more effective cooperative behaviors between agents in order for agents to work toward a common goal. So that makes me think that maybe there's more that can be done on the ML agent side, on the neural network side to make this work better. So we'll, I'm excited to see what that looks like. And that kind of made me think maybe it's time for me to wrap this up so that it doesn't end up um, like being some major blocker where I could have just if I just waited, then this would work a lot easier. I'm also excited to see that they're working on a single model that can solve various tasks. So that's something to look forward to for 2021. Uh, and then uh, observing a varying number of entities. That's also a big one because sometimes you have three entities in a scene and sometimes five, and it looks like they're going to try and solve that problem to make it easier for us. So that's exciting. Uh, here was my training for this. This was an old one, but this was the most recent one on the new environment. You can see it got a little, um, it was struggling a little bit here, but then it eventually learned and I, I stopped it earlier. So I, I think probably if I'd been a little more patient, these agents would be performing a little bit better than they are right now. So I've had a few people ask whether I'm going to share the code for this. I actually... Don't think I will. I don't think I'm ready to share this project. Um, we're not exactly sure what we're going to do with it yet, but Kayla encouraged me to create a project and not worry about making it into a tutorial and a, or a course or something like that and just see how it goes. So that's what this experiment has been. Uh, one of the side cool things is that a lot of you have expressed interest in trying this project along with me. And so that leads us to talking about the new ML agents uh, content that we're going to add on the Immersive Limit Community Forum. So the Community Forum is brand new. Um, this is my first post in it. It I posted it November 20th. We actually, or November 2020. So we actually did create this a couple months ago, but weren't ready to launch it. Uh, now I'm excited to launch it. The plan is to put a link on our website once this video goes live so that you guys can get there. Uh, but it's just community.immersivelimit.com. And I'll just talk about it briefly. Uh, this is a what's called a discourse forum. It's an open source forum, uh, community software. And the nice thing is it's not on Facebook. It's not in YouTube comments. Uh, it's not on Discord, which I'll get to in just a sec. So the uh, I, I'm not a huge fan of trying to discuss this sort of stuff on Facebook because it's really hard to like share code. Uh, you don't have as much control over what threads get like pushed to the top of people's news feeds. It's in there with a bunch of other clutter, you know, politics and memes and stuff like that. And I just thought that it'd be nice to have a much cleaner, separate experience. Uh, also, we can't get banned for some, you know, reason out of our control or something like that that really wasn't our fault. Uh, and then it's just easier to sort of keep threads going. So that was one of the things with uh, YouTube comments and discourse is that when someone asks a question, it's easy for that to get buried under a bunch of other comments or just because it's several videos ago. Uh, I just think that this, the forum, uh, you know, type of communication is really a good way to go. So that's why we chose that. And the first thing we're going to do on here is start some sort of community 
activities, I guess, community challenges where we'll work toward a common goal. Anyone who's interested can share their progress on it. I'm thinking sort of we keep like a challenge of, okay, today we're going to work on capture the flag. Um, and well, not just today, sorry, we'll, for like this month or some next couple months, we'll work on capture the flag. And then as some of us make progress on it, maybe we can share our Unity projects, we can share assets that we've made for it, we can share code, just talk about what's working and what's not working. And I think that'd be a fun way to do it that doesn't require us to just have sort of one-on-one uh, -on -one communication with, the, uh, with people through YouTube comments. Um, on top of that, there's a lot of you that have reached out to me through private messages and various social media channels. And I think a lot of you would like to know each other because it's a pretty cool network of people that I've built just creating this channel. And I think it would be cool for all of you to get a chance to talk and uh, introduce yourselves and work on content that's exciting to you. So the idea is this will be ML agent stuff. It'll be uh, synthetic data stuff and anything else in the sort of 3D and AI stuff or wherever we decide to take immersive limit. So uh, yeah, I'm excited about this. We'll probably do a more official like post about it in the future, but here's, here's my unofficial talking about it. Uh, so go ahead and sign up and I'm excited to see you in there. Finally, I just wanted to thank all of you for following along with this series and the positive encouragement. I really didn't know what to expect by making a devlog series. I sometimes feel like my insights on projects might be interesting, but uh, you know, until you actually try it out, it's hard to know. And it definitely pushed me outside my comfort zone to share some stuff that wasn't actually finished. And I didn't know for sure that I'd ever be able to get it to work. Uh, so I'm happy that I got it to work. It didn't necessarily have to go that way. It might not have worked out. So maybe in the future that'll happen. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for, for following along and all your feedback. And I also wanted to thank our two new patrons, Andre and Aaron. Thank you so much for supporting us on Patreon. Anyone else who wants to support the YouTube channel and now the forum can do so by uh, contributing to our Patreon, which we'll of course have a link to in the video description and on our website. And otherwise, thank you so much for watching and let us know what you thought in the comments.